Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to this point. Now, as we listen to your word, we ask, Holy Spirit of God, please teach us your word. Teach us the word of God. We thank you for this theme you have given us, victory. Greater victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we ask, may you expound the word of life to us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. We want to start by taking our text, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Let us read. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We looked at this very quickly last Sunday, and we made uh, four or five broad points out of this, that this year, ultimately, we, for us to have victory, for us to be able to say, I have victory, you, we have to develop what I call Holy Spirit-led strategic plan. You remember that? Holy Spirit-led strategic plan, ultimately. And we then put down four steps, of which number four was develop the strategic plan anyway. Point number one, steps to victory. Here, the scripture makes it clear that God is the one who gives us victory. And so step number one is to make up your mind, to give yourself to God, give your life, dedicate your life to God. This year, tell yourself, I'm not just going to live anyhow. I'm going to live for God. I'm really going to offer myself as a living sacrifice to God. That was point number one that we made. Point number two, of course, you cannot do anything with God without abiding in Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the message. Brothers and sisters, that's the message. The whole world hear and hear clearly. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Beloved brothers and sisters, we have received eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The victory, as we will be looking deeper into, is only possible through Jesus Christ. If you don't know the blessing that you have received through Jesus Christ, you will not be able to enjoy the total victory that the Almighty God has provided for all mankind. Victory is through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we have to abide in Christ. And then point three, I said exercise faith. Exercise your faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Another portion of the scripture said the just shall live by his faith. And then point number four, 
of course, is the strategic develop your strategic plan, Holy Ghost driven, Holy Ghost led strategic plan for victory. Want to look deeper into this. Today, let's focus on understanding that the context of victory here. As I told us, I said the fact that you have seen the year 2020, uh, you have come through that year 2020 into the year 2021, means you have victory over the year 2020. So we give God thanks for that. Many people will think it is by their own uh, schemes and skills. Well, some would say, yeah, but I didn't pray like you. I didn't do anything. Uh, but you see, God has his own time. Victory ultimately comes from God. We must have that context. Victory ultimately comes from God. I want us to just look at Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31, and hear what the Bible says. It says, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory is of the Lord. <clears throat> if you use New King James Version, uh, that is... Um, uh, NIV or English Standard Version. If you use New King James Version, it says, The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. And King James Version says, But safety is of the Lord. Victory ultimately comes from God. Victory ultimately comes from God. We must know the context of victory here. Some may also say, well, I mean, um, victory is about overcoming enemy. That's one way of looking at it. I want us to look at it holistically. So victory is the act of overcoming any obstacle at all. Whatever obstacle stands in your way, overcoming that obstacle in order to achieve the desired goals. Of course, the true victory of life is to achieve God's purpose. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter 29, First Chronicles, chapter 29, chapter 29, verse 11, yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Yours, O Lord, is the victory. And that's why I said we must recognize that ultimately victory, true victory, is from the Lord. There may be people who record their own victory, but I can tell you that when it comes to this life victory, uh, those victories will be temporary. And you can take a look at history. True life victory comes from God. So again, victory is an act of overcoming obstacles in order to achieve the desired goals. Now, the purpose that 
the desired goals. The question there is that you cannot have victory without a contest. There must be a contest for you to have victory. Yes, there must be a contest. There is no victory without a contest. Life is a fight. So in this year, 2021, are you ready to fight? And are you ready to fight on the side of victory? The side that is already guaranteed that you are victorious, which is the side of God through Jesus Christ. And that's why the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, clearly, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask a few questions for reflection. As I've said, there is no victory without a contest. So question number one, how then will you have victory in this year, 2021, if you're not ready for a fight? Contest means to fight. Are you ready to fight for what God has provided for you? Oh, some people will tell you, ah, if God has already provided, why should you fight? And I'll answer, because the world system has been corrupted. And there is an enemy that does not want you to have what God has provided for you. And has polluted the whole system of the world. And you really need God on your side and be ready to fight with God on your side in this world. Let's confirm that in the book of John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. Look at it with me and note this down. What does the scripture say there? It says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I read it again. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they, who are the day there, we, believers in Jesus Christ, and who is the one that has come, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So God has given blessings, but there is a thief. And the system of the thief has permeated the whole world. Look at this year, 2021. You have heard of different strands of COVID now in different countries. You need God. And I know with God, you will survive it. With God, we will survive it. With God, we will overcome it in the mighty name of Jesus. There are many other things that are even uh, the contest of your faith. Different ideologies just to pollute the blessings and the promise of God that God has already given to you and me. God has given to us. For example, the scripture is clear which are the areas we're going to look at deeper, that through Jesus Christ, you have received eternal life. We have received eternal life. I have received eternal life. And according to Romans chapter 8, verse 2, the Bible tells us that that eternal life, when you receive it, it suspends 
the law of sin and death, which means whatever sin brought into the world, whatever sin operates through, and death, the power of death, when you receive that spirit of eternal life, that law is suspended, terminated in your life. You have victory over that law. But are we not still struggling with it? That is why we have to fight. Look at Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 2 mainly. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Can you see that? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. That's why we're asking that question. Are you ready to fight? For what belongs to you. So there is no victory without a contest. You must be ready to. Contest this year. Fight this year. For what belongs to you. As I already told us. That this year. You must be ready to make this word of God. Fulfilled in your life, specifically in the area of growing to the level where your body is no longer susceptible to sickness of any sort, of any form. Are you ready for the fight? Question number two. How can you fight when you don't have objectives? Question number three, how can you have objectives when you don't know your purpose? You don't know your purpose. You don't understand the purpose. Question number four, how can you know your purpose when you have not come to your creator, God Almighty, when you have not learned to hear from the Holy Spirit, to have time to hear him. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's talk a little about this Holy Spirit, this blessing that God has given unto us. This life, this guaranteed victory through Jesus Christ. God helped uh, me and I put down in a book who is a Christian. I would recommend every one of us pick that book again and read. The summary of it is that you will come to understand that a Christian is one that is like Christ. And that the only way anyone can be like Christ is by being born of God, being born of the spirit of God. And anyone who is born of the spirit of God is called a son of God, a daughter of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So, we have been given the Holy Spirit. We have become the sons and daughters of God. Being a son, being a daughter of God, now gives you the right of all the promises of God in the scripture, in the Bible. But it requires faith, which are those steps we talked about. It requires faith. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher who teaches us and will continue to teach us 
through this year. That's why I'm talking about Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit driven, directed, strategic plan for victory in the year 2021. It is when the Holy Spirit leads you, guides you, gives you such plan that the victory will be guaranteed. And the victory will be true victory because it will help you fulfill God's purpose for your life. Glory be to God. So let's look very briefly again at that. Remember in the book of Luke, chapter 1, 34 and 35, verse 34, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? 35, and the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. The Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. How and why? Because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest, the power of God will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Look again with me in Matthew after Jesus Christ was baptized. Matthew chapter three. Let's look at verse 16. So you understand what we're talking about. The power of God that is available to you and me, available to us, Christians, believers in Jesus Christ. It is your right. It is my right. It is our right. But we have to be ready to contend, to use, apply for what belongs to us. Look at Matthew chapter 3. I read verses 16 and 17. When he had been baptized, this is Jesus. Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus. Though he was born by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. No wonder the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That's the same spirit that God is anointing you with. God is anointing me with. Are you ready for the Holy Spirit to use you? Are you ready to do what the Holy Spirit that has been given to you is capable of doing? You have to be ready to contend. Hallelujah. Victory does not come without a contest. Look at chapter 4, verse 1, the continuation of that Matthew chapter 3. Uh, I've read verses 16 and 17. 
So verse 17 says, And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. God announced Jesus as his son. The Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And God announced, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. Look at chapter 4, verse 1 down and see what happened. He said, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. Another translation said that he was led by the power of the spirit. That's the point I'm trying to bring out here. I know some of you, it is only the fasting for 40 days and 40 nights that you will see. Yes, fasting has its place. Um, but you can see here, Jesus didn't fast for 40 days and 40 nights to receive the Holy Spirit. God, Spirit descended upon him. So Jesus himself has made the way. By his victory over the devil, he has given you victory. Hallelujah. What he needs is for you to give your life to Jesus, to him and fight on his side. Are you ready to contend? Praise the name of the Lord. Are you ready to study to show yourself approved? Are you ready to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit? So Jesus moved in the power of the Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that he promised you and I, if you look at the book of John, we've read it several times, chapter 14, just to whet our appetite again. John chapter 14, remember, in verse 16, Jesus said, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Hallelujah. And you're very familiar with Acts chap chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I encourage you to read from verse four, but I just take verse eight because of time. Look at that, it says, but you shall receive power when the spirit, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost end of the earth and to the end of the earth. This is a simple point that you already have the Holy Spirit of God. If you have given your life to Jesus Christ and you need to consciously make up your mind that this year you're gonna change your level. It is you that will change your level. And the steps that we have enumerated already are the steps we are gonna dig deeper We've talked about exercising faith. How can you exercise faith if you do not know the promises of God that are meant for you? So we've just touched on a few promises to get today. We're going to be touching on very specific promises. The key one I want us to focus on is healing and divine health. Healing and divine health. The promise of healing and divine health. So this is the assignment for every one of us. 
Assignment number one, I want you to write down five scriptures. Study the Bible and write down five scriptures that gives you the guarantee of healing and divine health. Five scriptures. Assignment number two, I want you to write down three ways of receiving healing and walking in divine health. What are the three ways? Assignment number uh, three, and we will leave it here. How do you pray? For healing, different ways you should pray for healing. At least there should be five or six ways you should pray for healing. And to give you an example, number one way is to simply just thank God for your healing. That's how to pray for healing. You know why you do that? Because God has already given you healing. And so you can say, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. The scripture says, I was healed. That's First Peter chapter 2, verse uh, uh, 24 and 25. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Through Jesus Christ, you were healed. And so you just say, Father, thank you. Your word is true. I thank you for my healing according to your word, according to your promise, according to your provision. That's one. So that's the assignment that you're going to take. I want to pray now to round off this session. We are still in the introduction. We're going to deal with this. Your life will change by the grace of God. Our lives will change. We want to deal with this he healing because you need it. As I've said, we want to grow every one of us to the level that your body is no longer susceptible to sickness and diseases. Your body, you, no sickness, no disease. The promise of God is already there. It's for you to discover and exercise faith. This is what I will be teaching and we will be demonstrating it by the grace of God. This is only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit through the name of Jesus. So this is where we want to close before I pray. Do you want to give your life to Jesus as we started? Wherever you're connecting. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just go ahead and do it now. Tell him, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. I come to you. I know and I believe that you are the son of God who died for my sins, who died for the sins of the whole world. You shed your blood for me. By your blood, cleanse me now. Wash me and make me whole. Heavenly Father, forgive me my sins. I repent of it. And... I forsake all my sins. Now give me your Holy Spirit and transform my life. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray now and round off. If you're sick in your body, I've told you one way to pray. So just join me now as I pray for you and pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the victory you have given us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, we thank you for all round victory in this year, 2021. I thank you for granting victory to all these, your children, in the spiritual, in the physical, materially, in all dimensions of existence, in all aspects and affairs of life, I thank you for giving all of us victory. 
Heavenly Father, by your spirit, I ask let that victory manifest unto us, manifest unto all these your children in this year 2021 in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God Almighty, for all those that are sick by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Jesus, you have obtained healing for us. And so I declare everyone who is sick now, healed by the stripes of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. It is written, I shall cast out devil. I shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Right now, whatever devil is causing sickness, causing affliction in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, in your household, I cast out that devil. I take authority over the power of darkness and I cast out the devil. I terminate the activities of the devil in your life, in your family. Jesus has destroyed the devil. Jesus has defeated the devil for us, for you, for me. And so I terminate that work of the devil. The devil is a trespasser. Devil, get out. In the name of Jesus.